The Menifee maniac Fernando Gonzalez joins me once again, uh, this time as we discuss his next fight postponement that's taking place in July for King of the Cage uh, and a little pound for pound uh, prediction show uh, that I've been putting together with a lot of fighters across the country. So as always, Fernando, I appreciate the time. Right on, man. Thank you. Thank you for always having me. And uh, I love doing this stuff. It's fun for me. So <laughs> let's go. Definitely my pleasure. I always like watching you uh, compete inside the cage. And you were supposed to be fighting, uh, really, it was March uh, or April 5th is when the fight was. Now it's scheduled to early July. Uh, it, do you still have the same opponent uh, for, for that promotion? As far as I, I know, yeah. Um, and it's worth uh, King of the Cage. Uh, my opponent, Sam Lira. I mean, we we're both eager to fight. We we're three weeks away from the fight where, when it, you know everything happened. Um, I think just like every other fighter, we just wish we could have got that last one in. I mean, we're three weeks away, so if they would have waited a little bit longer, it would have been nice. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. We're we're still uh, – uh, I'm still eager to fight. If anything, I'm more eager to fight now than I have been even in preparation. So uh, I think it's going to be a great fight either way. If, uh, if he's still into it, then so am I. How was this camp uh, leading up before the fight was postponed? Were you feeling pretty good? Oh, yeah. I'm, I was ready to go. Uh, like I said, three weeks away, it's kind of it's kind of tough because you already put in all the work. You know, we put in a lot of a lot of rounds in, a lot of time in, in um, preparation. Um, you know, Sam's not a very known fighter yet, uh, but he's a very tough fighter. And uh, he actually... I think he's already defeated two guys, one from Bellator, one from uh, UFC uh, veterans. So he's he's hunting down veterans, you know, uh, and I like that that approach that he's going with. So um, I know he's he's eager to fight, and uh, I like that style. I like people that can get that rise out of me, and I I, I see what he's going for. So he wants to add me to that list, and. Uh, yeah, I'm motivated, man. I'm ready to fight him, and, and I was already ready to fight him. So July, uh, you know, I'm sure he's going to be ready too. But, uh, yeah, people should definitely tune into that fight because it's going to be good. I know you're a gamer, and when you have guys that come in there and really push you, uh, you rise to the challenge, which uh, leads to really exciting fights to watch. Tell me a little bit about Sam. What kind of a, a style do you feel, feel like he would try to implement here uh, if this fight does go down in early July? Um, he's, he's well, uh, mixed, you know what I mean? He, he throws, he, he's kind of like a brawling style. He brawls a lot. Um, he has technical punches, but the way he throws, it's like, you see him bite down on his mouthpiece and he just starts swinging away, you know? So some are technical, some aren't. Once you're in the fire like that, it's, they're, you know, it's not completely, uh, a straight punch and stuff like that. So. He's that style of fighter. So uh, with that, obviously, if he lands, he's going to hurt you. Some Same like Gaethje. He's not very technical. He kind of just throws everything behind it, you know. So, um, but if it lands, he's going to hurt you. You know, it's, it's like a sloppy technique almost. <laughs> it's like, but they, they use it to their to their advantage. Um, but I see there's, you know, what, with that style, there's op obviously there's openings. Um, so I stick with my boxing. I love to box. So my boxing, my kickboxing, I think is how I get it done. Uh, he definitely likes to go to the ground sometimes, but I think it's mostly either they take him down or he falls into something. He doesn't really go to the ground as much. Um, but, uh, it don't matter, you know, like we were already prepared. So like with, by the time July rolls around, we're going to be, well, well, uh, cardio on all aspects of the, uh, either stand up or ground um ob obviously with the with everything that's going on the training's not the same but you can definitely focus on other things and we got a lot of property here where i live so i, I got a lot of room to still condition yeah, tell me about that. What have you been doing during this pandemic? I mean, I, I could speak for myself. This is unprecedented. I, I wake up every morning and I feel a little stir crazy not being able to go and do the things normally that I would do on a day to day basis. What is things what has life been like for you? Um, it's not too bad. I mean, I I mean, I'm not like I wasn't the richest person, so <laughs> it wasn't like I was going out all the time when I was younger. So I, I've already kind of experienced the 
you have to stay home. You don't have money to kind of spend and stuff, you know? So, um, you know, I think it's affected more people that just haven't, you know, kind of experienced that. But, uh, for me mentally, I'm not, I had, like I said too, it's, and it's a lot different. I'm not stuck in an apartment, you know? Uh, we have property, we have a, a acre and a half. So I get to walk around. There's plenty of things for me to do here. Obviously, uh, since I've, uh, not being able to do too much like obviously once i've uh my fight was done i gave myself a little bit of break so once i've actually started coming back now it's mostly a shitload of yard work so i got to get it all done you know and um so i've been doing mostly yard work uh, i got a uh, bob so i i hit the bob i have a uh, i used to uh, have my own um school and stuff like that that i was training out of and um uh, so i have a lot of the dolomore mats I roll those out and I do my, my triangles, my hip escapes. And, you know, so I, I got a lot of things to work with here at the, at the house. And obviously, like I said, there's a lot of work to be done on the property. So it's that, you know, that, uh, farming strength, I guess that I start, I'm, I'm building right now. Well, that, that's good to hear that you're, you're still getting some, uh, some work around the house accomplished as far as sparring goes or getting any work in with teammates. Is, is that just non-existent right now? Are you getting any work in with any of your, your normal training partners at all? Um, you know, like, like I said, um, it was a smaller show. King of the cage is a smaller show. So, you know, the sponsors make a, a huge, uh, are a huge help. You know, they help me stay in camp. Um, and obviously right now it's helped me kind of stay afloat, uh, and hopefully I make it all the way to July, but, uh, just cause there's no work and then the fight didn't happen. So the money that I was supposed to get from the fight didn't come through. So the sponsors are actually what have kept me afloat. Um, now I'm just like, I, I really don't go to train and obviously they've shut everything down now, but as soon as the fight didn't happen, I had to make sure I had enough money to obviously have food, get uh, from place to place, my therapy and stuff like that. Uh, so I just been really cautious with what I'm spending on as far as, uh, money. Cause obviously I need gas, but if I was going to the gym every day, that money would be gone by now, you know? So I had to be really smart on what I'm doing. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm a veteran. I'm one of the older fighters, you know, I'm 36 years old. So, um, I've learned how to train by myself. You know, I had the ball by myself. I spar, I shadow box. I, I know how, like, I've already had so many fights, so I can picture a fighter or a fight that I've already experienced. And I remember some of the combinations that they, that they landed. And then I just go over that as I'm shadow boxing in my head, how they landed or how I made them miss. And then, you know, fighting similar. So anytime you fight another style that's similar to that, you're probably going to run into that situation again. And you already kind of know how to deal with it because you've gone over it about a million times. So that's kind of the, the things I like to work on. And, and also like, if I see a fighter that I think I would probably end up facing or, or like to fight, you, you see their style and then you kind of do the same thing. You visualize that the way he did that movement in the fight. And then you're game planning off that. Mm -hmm. Where are you right now, as far as your mindset goes in your career? Cause as you mentioned, you're, you're getting a little bit older, you're 36 now. Uh, when, when you think about how much longer you have to compete here at the highest of levels, how much, how much juice do you feel like you have left to give here? You know, the, honestly, it's just, it, I feel I, I, like I said, the majority of my fights, I do very little sparring. And it's funny because like Ferguson, he does that as well, you know, and uh, oh, Tony Ferguson. Um, and so it's like uh, something that you, you kind of get used to is like, you have to do it because it's like in the beginning, like we went through hell, you know, training at Henderson's, he was in his in his heyday and we're, we took a lot of damage learning the stuff that we needed to learn, you know what I mean? Learning how to get up, learning how to push. And, um, you know, and then sometimes guys didn't make it out of that. They got, you know, badly injured because it's just, it's just the luck of the draw shit happens, you know? And, and some guys didn't make it through. And, uh, the ones that did, it's like, you have to, your body's already taken that beating. So you have to kind of learn how to adjust, make sure you're still getting that work in, but without taking the actual hits, you know? So that's where the learning how to spar and movements and all that stuff by yourself comes into play. And for me, it just kind of happened 
naturally because um, at one point, almost everybody on the team was injured. They hadn't blown out their knees or something. You know, it was crazy at that time. There was like barely anybody was in the room uh, for a little bit of period. It was like, it was weird. One person got hurt and then just kind of trickled almost the same injury. And uh, for a while, I was having to do a lot of my training and stuff by myself. So then that's how I kind of started mixing that stuff in, um, you know, if the guys couldn't uh, train or whatnot. But obviously, when we're all together, we we try to help each other all out. But for a little while, every a lot of the guys were injured in, on the team. Um, but, you know, you learn how to you learn how to adjust. And I think that's helped me throughout my career. So. I learned all the stuff that I needed to learn. My body healed, and then I'm able to still continue to do it. So I haven't really taken much damage other than when I fight, you know. And I think I think that's good. You know, obviously, you could still get that in, in sparring and training. But I normally, like, do four weeks of hard sparring. And then two weeks before the fight, I'm hitting bags, cardio, to make sure if I took any injuries, I, I heal within those two weeks. Hmm. And then uh, mentally, mentally, it's a lot. You go into the fight a lot stronger because, you know, now I can if you're injured and you're training injured the whole way, you you kind of sacrifice like, I don't know if I want to throw that kick, you know. So if you give yourself those two weeks before the fight to heal, you know, you're not going to forget how to fight in two weeks. So no doubt. Yeah. Tell me, what what, what is your weight at right now? Has that changed at all during this this uh, time where people are at home or are you maintaining uh right around the same weight range um uh, well i was at 170 but for july i'm not i'm not, i'm like at 198 or something like that so yeah I'm, I'm a little i'm heavy right now so i'm gonna be i'll start hitting well actually i went on my uh i ain't running yet but i went on my walk today and um like i said just little things you got to be smart about and then uh, start pushing at the right time. So I think like they're saying at the end of this month, we're supposed to be able to go back. Um, so I'm already starting now to make sure, I, I mean, I've already been doing my training and, and like I said, I'm working. If you're working, you're, you're, if you're working hard, you're, you're, you're shedding weight, you know? So um, I'm ready to go, man. July, I'll be good to go. So July 12th is the uh, the official date where it has been rescheduled uh, until. So making that that welterweight mark will be no issue for you based on what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, welterweight will be fine. 185 for sure right now. You know, <laughs> I can make that. <laughs> but 170, I'm like, ah, oh, no, give me to July. You know. <laughs> yeah, well, I I hear you there. I'm sure most fighters in general, just people in general, are a little bit heavier right now, not getting out. Uh, you know, doing the the things that you normally would be on a regular basis. But I'm sure as we get closer to that time uh, frame, uh, you will tighten things up and get right back to to where you need to be. Um, let, let's talk a little bit, I guess, about the the rest of this year when things do get back to normal for you. Uh, if that fight in July does come to fruition. And, and the MMA world is back to normal and the UFC is having their fights and Bellator, King of the Cage and everything is back to normal. How many fights do you hope that you can get before 2020 closes? I mean, that's all going to be determined on on the, the amount of damage I take in the fight, you know? So if I take no damage, I'm, I'm fighting right away. Um, if, you know, if obviously if you need to heal some stuff up after the fight, uh, normally, normally it's like every other month, you know, or, uh, like three months apart. So normally that's safe. Cause it gives your body, no matter what, anytime you're doing a weight cut, your body's going to feel the effects of it. So as you get older, some of that, you feel a little bit more. Uh, so I, I normally feel, it, um, a good month lets my body kind of get back to normal from, from the weight cut, from the the adrenaline through your body, you know, like your, your body just feels like, like you went through war, you know, mm. you're, you know, especially you're taking the hits, but when your adrenaline's going like that, I, I don't know what it does, but I'm normally like knocked out for like two weeks after my fights. Like, I'm like, I don't want to do shit. Like, you know, I'm, I'm done, you know, I'm like, all right, I'm just going to not do shit and just let my body recover, you know? And uh, so I normally give myself a good month after a, a hard fight. And, um, 
and then normally I start my camp from there, you know. So I normally I normally space it out three months. So July and then you know three months from that, and then I normally at the at, you know like after November December those are like really hard months to actually get a fight. So if if I would be able to, I'd take it. But for for the most part, I you never really get a fight in that time. Uh, so then I would probably be looking at at uh, the following year. So maybe t- maybe two fights this year, mm-hmm. and then that that'd be it. Well, you were very um, outgoing and and really posting a lot on social media uh, about stepping in short notice. As UFC, the the UFC was looking for fighters to step in because uh, a lot of people, you know, you know, with everything going on, there were opportunities there. You're represented by Matt Dodge and Dodge, Dodge Sports, uh, phenomenal uh, management company. There was there any traction that came from that? Did you hear anything uh, about a potential matchup there? Yeah, it just uh, you know what. From what I ended up hearing back was was um, if you know I, I'm on a loss right now from the ACA fights, so they can't give me a fight if I was on a loss. So then that's that's kind of what we ended up hearing back. I'm guessing that's what I was told. <laughs> so it you know it kind of sucks because it was like like I said we we're three weeks away from a fight, and that could have easily been determined the win or the loss, you know, it could help me. I, I felt I was going to win the fight. So I think it was going to be in my favor, you know, but um, I'm not going to knock Sam either. If he would have got that win, it could have helped him get in, you know, like, like, I don't know if he's on a win or a loss or not, but um, I just think, you know, I posted for Woodley and I don't know, like, I'm sure he doesn't care who I am or whatnot, but they're like, oh, you're just, you're just, a lot of people will post and they'll say like, um, oh, you're only doing it to get your name out there or whatever. And it's like, no, man, we fight. I know I could put on a good fight against this person. And I, I just like everybody else want to feed my family. At the end of the day, that's what it's about. We're trying to make money to feed our family. So if that's the only show right now that is still willing to give fighters fights, then I'm going to throw my name in the hat. I mean, they may never hear, but you never know. It's like that, that they were trying to schedule the fight here in, um, at Tachi Palace. That's not far from here, from where I live. So let's say I threw my name in the hat at 185 because I know I can make that right now. And then they decided, oh, shit, as we're doing it at Tachi Palace, somebody dropped off. We can't fight. I'm there because I threw my name in. It's not because well, I'm just trying to... Uh, like get get my I don't care like I don't know what like uh, I don't see even uh, what is it like a uh, fame off of them or something and it's like no man we're trying to fight I know I, if you can fight I'd fight you but you know like I said they're they're on a whole different level because they're they're trying to get back to a title so if they give somebody that has no name it does nothing for them but to me like I know what they're chasing but to me they that kind of waters down why we do this you know it's who's the best and if you're the best you should be able to fight anybody Anybody. yeah no i look at at the end of the day anybody that that follows mma and knows anything about the sport knows what kind of a fighter you are and you're a gamer you've been in this for a long time you're you're clearly not chasing fame you're you're chasing titles you're chasing wins you're trying to be the best so anybody that would say that you're just trying to to ride on someone's coattails or making the ufc based on their name doesn't know what they're talking about uh you've been around for a while and it's always a pleasure to watch you fight uh let's definitely talk before uh july the 12th happens and uh discuss that and break down that fight when it does take place um but i do want to get to with you this uh pound for pound greatest of all time tournament uh that i've been having i've interviewed fighters across the country uh ufc fighters uh, former bellator fighters uh, king of the cage like yourself uh regional fighters basically what i've done fernando is i i've polled everyone i've told you guys to send me your top all time 16 fighters ever pound for pound it doesn't matter what the gender is and i formulated a list and we're, we're gonna pick some fights via tournament style so i have all the seeds and you know when i look on tapology it's pretty close right i mean and again it comes down to, to someone's opinion so it is subjective uh and based on what everyone said i formulated these rankings now i do have to apologize 
for whatever reason, and don't don't kill the messenger, Dan Henderson is not on the top 16 list here, and I don't know why. He was in mine, but he didn't have enough votes, so I, I apologize for that right out of the gate. Oh, man. No. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if they know fighting. <laughs> <laughs> right. Tell me your criteria. Tell me your criteria when you think of the best pound for pound fighters. What comes to mind uh, in your head as far as when you were making your list? Uh, for me, is well, like for me, like the older guys were the guys that I looked up to. So, like Dan and those guys. Uh, mine is guys that are trying to finish fights. They're, they're, they're going for that kill. And like Dan, I had put Don Fry because when Don Fry first came out, like, man, that guy was ruthless. That guy was beating the shit out of people <laughs> like bad. And Dan's kind of the same way. They just, they're not just, I mean, you saw what he did at Bisbing, you know, I was like, he, he hurts you, you know? So uh, that that's the style of fighter that I think is, um, Shit, I still want to fight like that. You know, I want to have one of those kind of fights still, you know. Sure. That's why I'm still in it. You know, I want to be able to just – I don't care if he's going to take me down. I'm, I'm going to throw to kill you, basically. But that, those style of fights are uh, the guys that I looked up to, and that's my – how I judge a fighter over over everything else, you know. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, well, let's dive into this. And I want to get your uh, prediction here uh, about how some of these fights would shake out. And again, we have to kind of take a step out of reality and imagine if these fighters are all equal, same weight class. Uh, and, and again, it takes a little... Uh, it's difficult to, to do that because if you look at Demetrius Johnson fighting John Jones, it's tough to imagine Mighty Mouse ever beating John Jones. But if you just look pound for pound stylistically, you know, who has the better skill set? You can make an argument that Mighty Mouse could potentially have a better skill set. It just depends on what you're looking at. So let's dive in and I want your predictions here. The number one seed in this bracket is George St. Pierre and he is fighting the number 16 seed, Randy Couture. If all things are equal, who wins and why? Hmm. I would, I don't know. I would say, I, I think Randy would still get it. I think uh, his pressure, the way he pressured fights, uh, he would punch, punch, take you down. But he wouldn't, con like, um, so George St. Pierre, he'll take you down, right? And then he does, like, his his punch, elbow, hops over your knee. But there's a lot of rest periods in there. And then he would like almost like get your back or whatever or and kind of like, you know, little shots. Randy would kind of take you down but not take you down. So then you're fighting to get up and then he clinch you up. And then the, the clinch is – there's a lot of work, you know what I mean? So um, that, that shit's – you know, it fatigues you. If you're not used to doing that kind of fight, I would rather get taken down where I can kind of chill, game plan, like, all right, this is what I want to do, than they'd be getting manhandled around. So I would go with Randy. Wow. So that's a major upset right out of the gate. Everyone that I've interviewed previously has GSP at least into the finals. Uh, so that is a that's a huge shakeup right out of the gate here, which which I like. Okay. We'll move down to the number eight versus number nine seeds. You got Fedor Emelianenko versus Chuck Liddell, a couple of heavy punchers. If all was equal, who would win? So we're talking about their heyday, right? Of course. <laughs> yes. All right. Ah, shit. I'd still, I would probably pick Fedor on that one. Okay. He, man, even when he fought Dan and when he was older, man, he was swinging fast. And I think, uh, and he hit, you know, he hits with power. And then uh, when he fought Miracle Crow Cop, so that's kind of how I, I, I gauge that because that's a kickboxer too, you know. So I figured, you know, when he actually fought Crow Cop, every time Crow Cop would try to throw, he was just in his face off balancing him. So his pressure going forward, I think, would be a little bit too much for, for Chuck. Um, and Chuck wasn't like always the fastest guy, you know, he just, he could hit you and he hit you hard, but he planted. And I think Fedor bounces in a lot. I think he would have, he would have probably caught him kind of like with uh, how Shogun, Shogun did that, that swoop and then caught him with that hook. He kind of closed with speed. I think it would be something like that. 
because Fedor does those hooks. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I would I would go with Fedor. Okay, I, I agree with you there as well. Now, here's where things get a little interesting because you're not going to see a sanctioned fight of a, of a man versus a woman here in the UFC or any other promotion for that matter. So in the number five seed is the only female in this bracket, Amanda Nunes. A lot of people feel like she's the greatest woman's mixed martial artist of all time, and rightfully so, looking at what she's accomplished. And she's taken on the former featherweight champ, Max Holloway, in the 12 seed. If all things are equal and you're not looking at gender, who has the better skill set? Who would win? She looks bigger than him too, so I don't know. <laughs> so I would, damn, that's that's messed up. This is not gonna like me. Uh, um, the only thing, because man, they're both good fighters. There, like technique wise, they're both good. Um, I would pick. I would still go with Max. Because he has never broken in a fight. And, uh, like, he's always, always thrown to the very end. Even when he lost recently, he has never quit. And Amanda Nunes, she quit against, uh, um, what's her name? I think it was, like, one of her first fights. Back in the day, yeah. I know who you're talking about. You just, I feel like shit knocking. Uh, <laughs> damn it, what's hey. her name? Oh geez, I'll have to, I'd have to look it up. Uh, but but you you have Max moving on. You you have him uh, winning that if all things are equal and gender didn't matter. Yeah, I would say so because it would like obviously they can both throw. Um, I think she would break before Max. Max, okay. he throws in volume like she throws with power. But I think obviously he would be able to take the shots. He he has a good chin and he doesn't quit. I think I think uh, he would break her before she would break him. Okay. And, and again, uh, something that would never happen, right? But look at what this pandemic is doing to us. Sports fans in general, we're talking about things that, that will never, ever, even in our wildest dreams happen. But uh, again, you know, you look at on ESPN and they're talking about what if LeBron James played Michael Jordan in their prime? It's not going to happen, but we can talk about it. And as far as mixed martial arts goes, this list here, you're getting some of the pound for pound greatest of all time. So it's interesting to hear what high level fighters like yourself uh, have to say about this. All right, we'll move down to the number four versus 13 seed. Anderson, the Spider Silva against the King of Cringe, Henry Cejudo. Who wins and why? Uh, I I go with Henry. I think Henry has uh, that that wrestling pedigree, and obviously he's got a big ass head, so he can take the shot. You know what I mean? <laughs> Boom. But uh, um, yeah, I would say his wrestling pedigree would would win win him the fight because you know Anderson was always good, but if he fought somebody with that movement, um where he can change shit together, uh, it breaks you. And, and um, you know, you've kind of seen that with Anderson. I think that af uh, affects him the most. And obviously his his being an Olympic medalist, you know, he's, he's going to be, uh, he's going to be able to get him down. Yeah. Well, Cejudo clearly has already accomplished quite a bit as a fighter in general, and he still has a lot left to, to do. So who knows, uh, as, he, as his career progresses, he might move up that all-time pound-for-pound rankings in a lot of people's eyes. Uh, here he's the number 13 seed, and you have him moving on. Now, this is a really interesting matchup, a.k.a. teammates, that I, I wonder if they were actually you know, going to get after it together and, and, and practice what would happen. But the number six seed, Khabib Namagomedov, against the number 11 seed, Daniel Cormier. I interviewed uh, UFC welterweight uh, Rocco Martin, and he was wild that, that DC was ranked number 11. He's like, this is just crazy. Cormier should be ranked way higher. W what do you think about this? Do, do you agree with that? And, and if him and Khabib uh, were to fight and all things were equal, do you think DC would win or would would Khabib stay undefeated? Uh, I don't know. I think, you know, uh, just just because of the way they fight, I would say Khabib would win that fight because um, DC, like even when he fought Jones, I think one of his biggest faults in the fight against Jones was he felt like he needed to take him down. And Jones actually took him down. So it was like, uh, hell no, there's no way you're going to take me down. 
I'm the, I'm the better wrestler in credentially, you know, and, and so he made it more about the wrestling than the actual fight, and I think that's what killed him. I can't remember if that was the first fight. I think, yeah, he's like, oh, I'm going to wrestle you down, this and that, but he was like killing himself to get him down instead of just fighting him. Hmm. Uh, and I think he would do the same. I think it's just ingrained in him because he's he's wrestler, you know, he's a, he's a, He's a wrestler through and through. He's learned striking, yeah. but that mental, that mental, like I'm a better wrestler than you, would play a factor in that fight. And I think, you know, if they were the same, you know, going against each other, um, I think that would play into Khabib's game plan. Really interesting take. I, I like it, and 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 I, and I like hearing what different fighters have to say as to who they think would win and why. It's interesting to 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 look at that and dissect it uh, as a fan. All right, here's another interesting matchup: the number three seed Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson against the most popular fighter in the world, and I don't think it's close right now. Conor McGregor, number fourteen. Who wins and why? Demetrius Johnson or Conor McGregor? Yes, sir. I would, mm, shit. I would go with Connor. I would go with Connor. The only reason I would say that because he touches you whether it's first or fifth, he's gonna probably knock you out. He hits hard enough, and Demetrius doesn't really have that punching power. And and his wrestling's come up. Even if you saw the like the first couple rounds with Khabib, he was doing really well. And I don't know if it was true about his foot being a balloon or. <laughs> you know, they always put that meme out. My foot was a balloon. Uh, <laughs> so you don't, you don't really know if his, if he really was like his leg was messed up, and he was defending takedowns that well. You know, I don't see him really having too much issue with with like uh, Demetrius, who doesn't have a a lot of punching power. He's more speed in and out, you know, and and, and chaining like that. Uh, I think he'd be able to defend enough in like the first three rounds to be able to put him away. Wow, oh, I, I like it. And again, I actually had Mighty Mouse winning there, but you may have just turned my, me around. I, I like where your head's at there. All right, here's another interesting matchup. Uh, a, a longtime wrestler, uh, former welterweight champion, the number 10 seed, Matt Hughes, against number seven, the former featherweight champ, uh, Jose Aldo, a uh, great kickboxer. Very interesting stylistic matchup. Uh, who do you got in this one? Mm. And same, like in their heydays, they were really like Jose was real difficult to take down. Uh, Hughes never had like the, the strongest hands, so I would I would pick Jose as far as uh, if they were like equal, you know. Uh, he just had like especially in the heydays, he was very very quick and very difficult to take down. I think that's what how Saint Pierre was able to to take out uh, Hughes. Um, was once he was able to believe in himself that he was able to chain all that all his his tools together, uh, and obviously Jose in his heyday he was like killing everybody he never lost, you know. So um, I think he would definitely have the confidence to to know that he was going to win that fight, and I would think he would win. All right. And now the last matchup of the first round, you got John Jones, the number two seed, against the number fifteen seed Dominic Cruz. How do you see this one? Uh, I would go, you know, it's, it's crazy. There's Dominic Cruz knows how to go in and out. So that's one of the things that people have not really had. Obviously the, I, I train with Dominic. I didn't really train with him, but we train in the same room, you know, um, with, uh, Dominic Reyes and Dominic Reyes was doing that in and out action where he closed and, and, uh, you know, it's more of a, like a boxing kind of thing you're moving in and out and, and using your boxing because there's the brawling style boxer. And then there's like a Muhammad Ali style boxing. And then it's like, you're using your movement. Uh, so when they move in, it, it's easier to close distance with them. Uh, I like, I honestly, I employ that the most because I normally fight guys that are taller than me. And instead of me rushing in to kill the guy and get possibly knocked out by them, uh, you m move with them. So then they, need to commit forward and then it's easier to close that distance without eating big shots so that style is is 
is uh, good against a tall fighter if you know how to use it. And Dominic definitely knows how to use it. And he's a very smart fighter. He's got a great chin. He has great movement. So uh, if they were close in like equals, I would say Dominic Cruz would win that fight. Woo. You have George St. Pierre and John Jones, the number one and two seeds, gone in the first round and completely done. I, I like it. This is going to be really interesting to see what happens here moving forward. We'll move right up to the top of the bracket, Fernando. Uh, Randy Couture and Fedor. Who do you got? Shit. <laughs> That's like a Team Quest thing. <laughs> They've all fought him. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. Linlin fought him, Matt, uh, Dan's fought him, and then uh, Chael fought him just recently. Uh, man, if, if that would be awesome to see. Dude. Like, in real life, that would be awesome to see. Uh, Randy and, and Fedor. Uh, heyday. They'll kill me. <laughs> They'll kill me. <laughs> uh, I'd have to go with Fedor. I don't know. Uh, shit, I don't know. No, nah, I go. With, I would go with Randy. You're gonna go with Randy. Like, yeah, because the thing is, the way he fought Tim Sylvia, where he was doing his striking, and then when he thought he was doing striking, would get him down, would get him down, get up. If he could do that mentally, that game plan against Fedor in his heyday, I think he would win that fight. And he kind of did the same with Chuck Liddell, and I and he broke him. Uh, and I think he would do that with with Fedor. I think you could do that with Fedor. I don't know. It would, that would be a fucking sick fight, though. Would yeah. be, yeah. Interesting fact. Uh, Tim Sylvia, obviously former heavyweight UFC champion, is he's from uh, Ellsworth, Maine, which is 20 minutes uh, down the coast from where I live right now. And before he ever made it in the UFC, I think I was... I mean, I, I was not even 21 yet. I was waiting uh, to, to try to sneak into this this club, and he was bouncing there. And there was this guy that was a little bit older than me, but on the same football team in high school, and he was like the big bully. He was bigger than everyone else. And I saw Tim Sylvia pick this guy up like a rag doll and body slam him, and his knee landed right on his chest. And I remember my eyes popping out of my head being like, who the heck is that guy? And then a couple years later, he's in the UFC winning titles. Crazy story, huh? Oh, that's awesome, man. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I knew it. I knew right? it. Yeah. Small world for sure. All right. So now we have uh, Max Holloway and Henry Cejudo here in the second round. It would be interesting, too, if you didn't pick uh, Holloway, if you had Nunez, you'd actually see Nunez versus Cejudo in the second round, which I believe Cejudo actually wanted that fight, if I remember correctly. He was calling Nunez out. <laughs> but that's not going to happen. So you got Max Holloway and Henry Cejudo. Who wins? Uh, I would, I would go with Henry. I think his wrestling, his wrestling, uh, stomps out a lot of people like, uh, and then he's actually been striking too. He does that. He, he kind of does that pull too, where he goes in and out. Max, Max does it, but once he gets warmed up, so, uh, I would say Cejudo just cause he would be able to possibly catch him early on. And if not, he always has his wrestling to go back to, you know, that's his, his main thing, but I think he'd just be really difficult to stop as far as his wrestling goes. Yeah. And that brings up uh, another interesting matchup, Cejudo and Couture uh, to, to make it to the finals. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, I want to move right down to the second part uh, of this bracket here for the second round, Khabib and Connor, a fight that we already saw. Uh, do you feel like that foot uh, really hampered Connor uh, and it affected his performance? Do you think he would win a second time or do you see Khabib still moving on here? I would I would still think Khabib moves on um, because it's okay. It's one thing like to know how to deal with the wrestling, but at the same time, it shuts down his game because it's uh, he's like his last fight. He was so focused on the wrestling that he actually even got beat on the striking with that big overhand, you know, that he threw, either it was right or left uh, that set him on his ass. I mean, he took the shot well, but, you know, I put him on his ass, and, and I think it would – him trying not to lose, him having to worry about not getting taken down. Like, honestly, I think he'd have a better shot 
if he wins like two or three more fights. If he won two or three more fights, you know, then then <laughs> then um, I think his confidence would be a little bit stronger. But also as his his conditioning, I would fight more wrestlers if I could, just to build that up. You know, guys that are obviously not going to be as good as Khabib, but just to build that strength up. So I would go with still with Khabib, uh, being able to mentally break him uh, with with uh, with his wrestling. So three of your four finalists here to, to make it to the semifinals, they're all wrestlers. And now we have the last matchup, uh, a couple of strikers, Jose Aldo and Dominic Cruz. Uh, if they were both the same size and in their prime, who do you got? Yeah, I would, uh, shit. I would, I would go with Cruz. I would go with Cruz. His movement, um, his movement is, is very hard to deal with. Uh, you kind of you, you kind of have to know how to fight somebody like that, um, or have actually fought maybe somebody that does that kind of movement. It's hard to it's hard to deal with because the punches come from weird angles, and um, Jose he does he's kind of like a like a tie almost where he just kind of bounces in one spot, and then and then he like charges and then he'll go. But it's like you, you see him doing this, you know, and then he blitzes whichever way. So with the the bouncing in and out sideways, he, he's having to readjust. He's having to readjust. So by that time, I think uh, Cruz would would either land something heavy or uh, be able to get him down with the with his in and out uh, movement. So I would go with Cruz. I like that analysis. I like the way that you're explaining stylistically uh, how they would match up against one another if that fight ever did happen. Very interesting. All right, so now we're down to the final four. The first matchup, Randy Couture and Henry Cejudo. Uh, very interesting. Obviously, the, the size difference is enormous, but if they were equal, uh, which one of these fellas has the better skill set? Who would, uh, who would get the W? I've seen rest. I haven't seen them like a lot, but I, I did get to see those guys move. You know what I mean? So I would say Randy would still win that fight on this one, just because he, he could strike ground, strike ground and, and never really take you down. Just kind of keep you fighting. And that shit wears you out more than the actual takedown. Like if they actually get you down, then you have more time to like game plan and think what you're going to do to get up or, if you're fighting right away, it, it's there's more rest periods there than if you're halfway down and then you're like trying to climb up and then you're like, you know, so that that's and then you're carrying their weight too, so that makes it a lot more difficult. Um, and he man, that guy could game plan for fights. Uh, I think that's uh, you know like uh, sometimes they go off too much off other people's game plans. Right now, it's good that they, they have people to train them and, and get them ready. But sometimes you got to be able to make those decisions yourself once you're going live, you know. So um, I think Dick Randy was one of the best guys at game planning for for opponents. So I would definitely go with Randy on that. All right. So you have the natural Randy Couture in the championship. Who is he going to face, Khabib or Dominic Cruz? You know, I've never really seen uh, I've never really seen Dominic get controlled on the bottom. So it's like his style of movement, I think, would catch would catch Khabib. But you've never seen him get actually I don't I don't think I've ever seen him fight anybody at that level of wrestling, you know, so uh, you could arguably say Demetrius, but I think Demetrius was too small for him. And he was able to like hip escape well, uh, but Khabib has no. He doesn't really have hands. His hands are terrible. Uh, I would I would go with the. Uh, I, I think cardio wise too, he has a better cardio. Dominic has better cardio than Khabib. Uh, I think Khabib like he kind of he's good, but he's like pressuring. You know, mm -hmm. he's pressuring, but it's like he's more resting because he's trying to break you down with his weight. Where I, I don't think I've I've ever seen Dominic get tired, so I'm gonna go with Dominic Cruz. 
Wow, you got the number 15 seed, Dominic Cruz, springing another upset in the championship against the number 16 seed, Randy Couture. This bracket is is all messed up here based on uh, what everyone's pound-for-pound uh, pound predictions are as far as rankings goes, which is great. This is, this is exactly why I wanted to do this, Fernando, is because, as you know, styles make fights. And when you look at these matchups stylistically, it really is interesting from a fighter uh, of your caliber to break down and say why so-and-so would beat uh, someone else. So here we go. The championship, Randy Couture and Dominic Cruz. Who, who's the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter of all time as far as this bracket goes? Who, who's getting the W? Damn. <laughs> now I got tough. Uh <laughs> I would I would probably pick Dominic Cruz, just because his movement is hard to deal with. Uh, like I said, I've never seen him get dominated on the ground, and and if he got took down, he got up pretty pretty quick. Uh, he never gasses, but Randy never gasses either. Uh, I would I would probably base it off the striking. I think Dominic has a uh, more more uh, diverse striking than Randy did. So Dominic Cruz wins. Is it Would he win via decision, or do you think he could catch him and finish him? I would think he would catch him and, and have to finish him. Um, other than that, it'd be like a decision. You know, <laughs> Randy would probably win. A, if he could get him down, he'd get up. He'd get him down. He'd get up. You know, he'd win, but I think it would be off more of that than if they struck a little bit. I think, I think uh, Cruz would get him. He's got... He's got good striking, you know. Good Very movement. cool. Well, this was a lot of fun. I really appreciate your take on all of this. And again, it just gives us mixed martial arts fans uh, something to talk about, uh, something to uh, you know project. Even if it's never going to happen, we can still talk about how fun these fights would be. Uh, and I really appreciate yourself and everyone else that has joined me uh, previously to, to do this. That's a lot of fun. Again, Fernando, you're always a pleasure to interview. Uh, I look forward to seeing you step back in for King of the Cage in July. I'm sure you have some sponsors that you'd like to thank uh, for everything that they're doing for you during these tough times. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, r, &R uh, uh, and uh, heating and cooling, um, you know, uh, Sparza plastering, uh, they've, you know, they kind of, they stepped up for me big time and uh, they've been helping me out a lot. So. Uh, um, you know, all my teammates that did, you know, that were there helping me get ready for the fight, you know, three weeks before the fight, uh, didn't go through. So, you know, it kind of bums me out. Cause like, I like hey, when, when I have guys helping me out, I like breaking bread, you know, <laughs> like if I eat, they eat, you know, so, um, you know, thank you guys for helping me get ready. And, uh, you know, once the fight goes through, then, then, you know. You know, I'll take care of you <laughs> as, as some, but not everything, but I'll give you something. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I want to, I want to, you know, for sure. Thank, thank my teammates that, that were helping me get ready. And some, a lot of them were on the fight too with me, so they didn't get to fight either. So, you know, July we're, we'll be back at it. And I'm sure Sam's going to want to take that fight. If not, it'll be somebody else. But I'm, um, like I said, we're, we're ready. We're eager to get, get the fight out of the way. And, and get another, uh, you know, get my hand raised. Obviously, I love that that feeling. So I was uh, definitely bummed out for three weeks out and didn't happen. So July can't come any quicker, and uh, we'll be getting that hand raised for sure. Well, again, always a pleasure to talk to you, my friend. Stay uh, healthy and safe out there. Stay COVID-free to yourself and all your family. And I'm sure we'll be talking again here very soon uh, before this fight in July happens. Oh, yeah, brother, for sure. Thank you for having me.